Athena, kill the lights. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Hey, what's up, guys? Chris Cohen here, and welcome to another Filmmaker Reacts episode. As always, guys, in part one, we react to the awesome cinematics, and in part two, we dive into have a cool discussion about filmmaking techniques used, as well as visual effects that we can maybe pull from them and pull off in real life. Today, we're going to take a look at Rico, another one of the Overwatch cinematic series, which I'm pretty pumped because every episode we've seen so far has been pretty sick. As always, guys, let me know in the comment section below what your recommendations you have about other cinematics that we should take a look at. I will always put them in our awesome blackboard and every single recommendation that you guys put, I put it on the blackboard and we're gonna have an episode on it. So guys, let me know your favorite part as well as any recommendations that you might have. Now, today's episode is brought to you guys by Filmora 9. Many of you have been asking me why is a solid, affordable option when it comes to video editing software to get started with content creation, gain experience and play around. And I'm happy to say guys that Filmora 9 is a great place to be. Whether you want the solid basics when it comes to editing, transition effects, filters, motion elements and much more, Filmora 9 has you covered. But also if you want to take things a bit further up when it comes to for example call grading or let's say transition effects, it has those as well. Personally, those two aspects, color grading as well as transition effects, are gonna really help differentiate your content when it comes to video and the quality of it and just help you achieve that film look that will make a difference. By following the link in the description, guys, you can get a free trial, download Filmora 9, start playing around and see if it fits your needs. A big thank you to them for sponsoring yet another episode and being awesome. Now, with that said, guys, we're ready to fire up YouTube and get started on the Recall Cinematic. Have you pulled up? Let's go full screen. Ready? One, two, three. Use of tobacco is always... Oh, that's a happy tone. Executive mandate. Shield generator test. Ready to proceed. Athena. Planet of the Apes, Tony Stark. Now, now. No need for that, Winston. Your heart rate is through the roof. I told you to stop monitoring my vitals, Athena. Very well. It has been 43 days, 7 hours and 29 seconds since your last cardio workout. Remember, a healthy body is a healthy body. Healthy body. That's why I have this. That's me when editing. <laughs> Wait, peanut butter and banana? The second Arnold crisis continues to devastate Russia. The conflict between Arnold and humans is you see news of this sort, we go through this. I remind you, recalling Overwatch agents to active duty comes with great risk. Okay. The Petrus Act clearly states any Overwatch activity is deemed illegal and punishable by prosecution. I know. <sighs> right. That's the way the world is. <sighs> but I do miss the old days. Oh. We know some of them. Tracer. Oh, I did get Planet of the Apes vibes. I think you have something that belongs to me. Hand them over. Oh, it's okay. You're not in trouble. Oh, I'll trade you. 
There you go, buddy. <laughs> oh, he's wearing glasses after, so it's his glasses. Well, there's not much to see from in here, kiddo. But you know there's more out there, don't you? Where is this going? <laughs> Come on. It's time I showed you something. Ooh, here we go. I'm detecting intruders. Talon. Athena. Kill the lights. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Something I've been myself. This is so cool. Sick. 
That bad guy is actually has a really cool design. So that was pretty sweet. Okay guys, what did you think about this cinematic? It was pretty good. It still doesn't top um, dragons, I would say. Dragons is still like pretty epic. But of course, being an Overwatch cinematic, it was pretty, pretty sick. So, let's jump over to the analysis part, take it step by step and see what we can like pinpoint in terms of filmmaking as well as other cool things. As always guys, make sure to follow me on Instagram to see other projects that I'm currently working on as well as other cool things. I'll have that link down below as well. And let's get started. So, full screen again. First play, we have the little kind of like thing. We have the cool logo. It has a very, just from like the music itself, we can tell it's a more like happy, go lucky kind of like opening versus it being dark and like. Doo -doo -doo. So we have a very slow kind of like slider shot entering this scene, and we get a bit of an exposition naturally from like what the labels say and things like that. And when you have a slider shot, approaching something, let's say, a door, a corridor, and things like that, it's almost as if the scene itself and the movement of the camera is inviting you in. You can also use this to invite the audience to what a character feels, for example, and in contrast, if you do the reverse move, you're disengaging the audience from the scene or the character. For example, if it's a very tragic scene, and the death, for example, in order to kind of like maximize the loneliness and the of the character, you will pull, pull, do that reverse move to like disengage the audience. So we're approaching into this kind of like dark thing. Having kind of an overhead shot of something just gives you a cool perspective of the space as well as if gradually getting you into the scene. For example, in this case, we have Winston, the character kind of like, you know, being science-like and making something, but just like giving us an overhead look of what is going on, we have some time to process and then us ourselves kind of like get in tune to what we expect is gonna happen. Who presents? They still don't show us what he's making because they want to build just a tiny bit of tension, not excessively. They don't use something like a riser or some more dramatic like bass-like soundtrack. It's still like a go lucky, -like happy, kind of like, you know, building something kind of soundtrack. But they don't show us still what he's making. They they're keeping it a bit of a secret, you know, until they reveal it. So let's have some cool sparks Shield happening. Ready to proceed. Now, basically, Google Assistant for Overwatch, Athena, um, is giving us basically a bit of exposition here because she said seal testing initiated and things like that. And now they're gonna show us the item with a nice, cool, like somewhat close up, as well as reveal the character face when it comes to that. That is a cool effect, actually. I would say you can do this in After Effects if it's a duty effect. You're just gonna have to make a bubble, basically, and then feather it in, as well as the animation started playing. Put some cool glow effects because it is kind of like a HUD display, and take it from there. And as you can see, it's a pretty static shot with a, just a gradual, like, zooming in, which is fine. <laughs> You can definitely do this with an After Effects. It's cool. Now, now, no need for that, Winston. Your heart rate is through the roof. I told you to stop monitoring my vitals, Athena. Very well. We have a cool kind of interaction between the assistant and kind it of like their relationship let's say 43 days 7 hours and 29 seconds since your last cardio workout 43 days that sounds like me remember a healthy body is a healthy boy that's why i have this <coughs> it's a very cool thing to use naturally occurring movement within the frame of something where there is a sword 
a bullet, in this case the cap from like something like, I don't know, Nutella, whatever it is. And in this case we have the cap, so as the cap rolls on kind of like the table surface, the camera follows it to reveal how much he's eaten, which is pretty funny. But it's a way cool technique, whether that is a sword kind of like pointing to somewhere and the camera following it to like motivate us to look somewhere else, or a bullet, usually if it's an action scene or like the fist going in. It's pretty sweet. So again, we're still pretty relaxed. So we're getting the sense that that has been his routine, kind of like trying to make something, kind of like watching over and just waiting for something to happen so he can call Overwatch. Every time you see news of the we get more exposition by the use of the assistant, which is pretty, a pretty smart it's way. We go through great risk in illegal. That's the way the world is. So using photographs, ah, oh, that's actually a great way to do flashbacks and give more like characterization. Um, so we have a way more mellow song choice, I would say. And then they're focusing with a cool close-up in a photograph. Using photographs is such a cool way to like put the audience in thinking mode and kind of like having them start like their imagination working of what could have happened with this photograph. I've did a, I haven't done it, but I remember I did a very very like kind of like fast test about Paragon back in the day. Man, that was years ago. And I did use a photograph um, to kind of like insinuate uh, what a character goes through. And usually when you photographs, it means that the person that is next to the character is usually gone. And so it can be used for many reasons. And here we're going to go to the flashback and to kind of like the lesson that his father figure, I'm guessing. That was, a, that was a neat effect actually. It was very subtle, but there is kind of like a meteor flying by the glasses reflection, which is very easy to make actually. Ooh, what a cool way to show a meteor without actually showing the whole meteor effect on screen. Like if you have a character kind of like gazing on a cityscape and it's like dusk and they have glasses, you can do the same effect and basically mask out the lenses section using After Effects and create kind of like a mat and then have the Meteor Acid fly by just the glasses that would be a sick shot actually and of course it's shown twice because it's two lenses and the lenses do not perfectly reflect space as one that's pretty sick so we have the character looking over space and kind of emptiness and then he's gonna be taken over to see Earth. I Sweet. <laughs> Peanut butter! That's how you call it. There you go, buddy. <laughs> glasses. Just to see from in here, kiddo. <laughs> this is cool. We have basically uh, how to jump back to real time. We have the use of, the so of a sound effect, which is an alert, and that kind of sound effect starts building up, and it's in its peak. You have a qua qua uh, this like white kind of like flash transition to real time, and now everything becomes very more heavy. The bass, the footsteps. I'm detecting intruders. Kevin. Athena. The lights. Kill the lights. That was a cool sound effect. <laughs> very cool shot. Usually uh, it's very dramatic to have a subject only lit in from the back and not the front because being lit in from the back means that you're very contrasty up front, like you can see barely any detail because you're just illuminated from the back. That makes for a very dramatic, dark kind of like overlook. That is really funny though. When the banana falls, the sound, kind of like that heavy pulsating bass sound cuts as well. And we have perfect quiet. Whoa! 
We've talked about Mazur's lasses quite excessively before. If you go frame by frame, you can actually see the detail that when the gun flares up, you also have the spark impact because the two characters are so close, but it only lasts for a couple of frames, which is pretty sick. But as well, I'm gonna try to be very quick because there isn't a very extensive tutorial on the channel about gun shot effects. Uh, when it comes to the flare, as well as sound design, actually. And the trick about a very realistic gun sound is what a gun effect is one, sound, actually, believe it or not, and two, is light cast. When you have a flare, it should cast light to whatever the subject is. For example, because we're from the back, the gun does not really light him up other than the edges of the face, but the other character with the flare kind of like flares out to, we can see the light over here being illuminated, and that is the best way to basically make something realistic. Have, when something is supposed to cast light, do put light effects. For example, last week we saw the clip where it had the Skyline R34, and we had the cool kind of like exhaust muzzle flash effect where the exhaust pop about ignition, and the concept is the same. So, it's pretty sweet. It lasts for like, what, two frames? Yeah, sweet, and then go. Nice, so sick though. Unfortunately, you will need very advanced like uh, particle simulations like Cinema 4D or uh, 3DS Max and some plugins and a lot, a lot of physics experience to do this kind of transition when it comes to a character reveal. Nice, that's a cool design, guys. Who's he? Let me know. When it comes to electricity effects, that is so cool, actually. It's very sci-fi. kind of like it. It's very interesting how they're actually using the camera of approaching the gun as the gun shoots. This kind of like parallax movement is actually very cinematic and interesting. <laughs> So, when it comes to light effe lightning effects, actually, guys, I think Video Copilot has done an extremely awesome tutorial on, like, procedural lighting effects. But basically, if you have patience, time, and the budget, you can definitely put some very cool lightning effects using After Effects. It's all about, like, animated solids that are, like, a streak, and then a lot of glow effects and sound design of, like, electricity going on. We've actually seen the Star Wars lightning kind of like effect and there is a tutorial on the channel. So our bad guy wants to hack the system basically. This is another very cool example of use of lightning. Very cool. Security protocols failing. Winston, Reaper is extracting the Overwatch agent's database. Oh, really? What happened here, guys? Did I miss something? How did he go into this? What is this? Is it like the special move of the character in game? Let me know. Haha, <laughs> that was fun! This is very, very funny. Uh, Overwatch being kind of like a more like happy go lucky kind of like cinematic series. Um, this is comedy gold when you have the bad guy doing something and not just caring about what happens in the background, like it's just mayhem and you have that one dude that's passing by and he's like, if you need something done, do it yourself. Nice. <laughs> 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 Another cool transition when you think that the character got axed or something. It's a very cool way to transition to black and then go back to a flashback. And we're just waiting to see what happened. Did their hand got chopped off? Did they got stabbed? Did they catch something? What is going on? And that way you give some time to you to tell 
and close up the previous story threads you pulled through because here we have two lines going on we have the current timeline as well as the past the past is used to showcase how the character was taught something that maybe he kind of like forgotten and how he's gonna that kind of like pivotal moment in the past is gonna play through now and basically that's one story thread and the second one is the current one for obviously and how it's gonna play out we have the cool figure, See if there was more father out figure, there. showcasing Earth. Man, I love sci-fi and like science fiction kind of effects. Again, thankfully, we have done some planet scenes in the past in the on the channel, um, and it's definitely something that can be done within After Effects. And actually, again, Video Code Pilot and Andrew Kramer being the grandfather of like tutorials and visual effects, especially online, he has an amazing plugin called Orb, if I'm not mistaken, which you can put scenes like this, which is pretty sick. What I would do when it comes to the overall scene, because again, we have a very flat, slight reflection effect happening on the lenses, and yes, this is all computer generated, but we can pull a lot of ideas and effects from these cinematics because they're just freaking awesome. So again, if you are a character with glasses, you can map out the glasses and just show the reflection of Earth on those glasses. But what for this scene, oh. you don't actually need a green screen, even though if you did have a green screen, that would be sick because it would make life so much easier. But in order to have a silhouette of a character, you can shoot your character because they don't move much. If you guys notice, there's just a very slight like camera movement going backwards, which I'm actually wondering why did they not do the opposite? Have a slight inwards movement. But anyways, back to the silhouette and the green screen thing. If you don't have a green screen because the the movement is very minimal, you can use what it's called basically rotoscoping, which is basically masking out manually a character to do this. So basically, you will have two layers, foreground and background, and you could pull this effect off. Accept the world as it appears to be. Dare to see it for what it could be. So this is the lesson that the character needs to remember. Winston. And now we're back to real time. Winston, he's going to have all agents' locations. Oh, it's monkey. Yeah, monkey. So we come full circle kind of like to the initial scene in the reveal of the character who was working on this kind of like shield looking effect and it, this is very interesting because technically when something is done right everything that you show to your audience should have a purpose and a reason to be there for example having this little device that he was working back in the beginning and it was kind of failing come back into play at the end and being kind of like used as a way to take down the bad guy is a really smart way of doing film because you show something at the beginning that is not it might be considered like pointless let's say and that was actually the point with uh, my short God of War Rise of the Sun where at the beginning you see kind of like blood in the forest as well as the all the kind of girl being dead and at first when the fight, spoiler alert by the way, if you guys have not seen the short film about God of War, make sure to check it out in the channel. Um, but basically, by the end, after the whole fight is done and the character kind of like moves on, we cut back to the character that lost and as the camera pans out, that girl that was supposed to be dead and it was just introduced for a few frames at the beginning, comes back into play. So that is an example of putting something at the beginning and then bringing it full circle to be used at the end. <laughs> I'm a scientist. Something very slight to keep in mind, guys, when you have visual effects, try to have actual procedural kind of like in-camera effects happening. So let's say that you would shoot this real life, right, with a camera. What you would have in one scene would be the example of the of this. So this would all, of course, be computer uh, generated within After Effects. But in the next scene, in the close-up of the character, you can see the red flashing 
So what you should do on the day of production is to have a small LED, just like I have here, to illuminate me from the back and give that nice kind of like blue edge light. Use something like this, put like a cool kind of like filter to make it red and then have it flashing on the character. What that's gonna do to you in post is when you cut to this, it will all connect because the effect is gonna be pulsating red and then you will have this LED pulsating red on the character as well. And that is just gonna make things look that much more realistic. Test. Again, basically this is kind of like the Star Wars lightning, like dark side effect. This is really cool. Extraction ninety percent So we have the final kind of like build up of tension when it comes to is are they gonna get hacked? And usually you wanna leave just the final beat at the end of like did it work? Did they got saved or not? Did he got stabbed or did he flinked it? Even if we know that they probably got saved and we've seen so many things uh, in terms of like as our experience as viewers when it comes to did they made it or not, for some reason it's still so enjoyable to give us those few seconds, those few frames of like wonder, even though deep down we know they probably made it, it's just, it's wholesome, it feels nice. Virus quarantined. And now we go back to this kind of like question, should he do something about this or not? Should he accept as things as they are or should he remember the lesson that his father figure taught him when he was a little kid? And we go full circle and we have the character progression that this cinematic short wanted to have as a overall teaching moment, let's say, of a story. Because every story should have a point, a lesson or just something that the filmmaker wants to pass on to the viewer through this creative medium. And this one would be the character progression of actually being like, no, this is what needs to be done, do it. Very slight reflection. Oh my god, this scene, this scene exactly reminds me of a project that I'm not sure I didn't actually release it, I released it as a VFX concept scene, but basically it's having the character and then having HUD displays in front of him in the foreground and then having him look. I'm gonna have it pop up so you guys can tell what I'm looking for, what I'm talking about. And basically it's just a cool effect, it's really easy to put, just put the tripod, put the HUD overlay in front and just make sure that if your camera lens has depth, you will adjust that depth to your assets. For example, here you can see that the HUD display is blurred out because the camera lens has actual depth and separation. So this is another cool trick and something to keep in mind when you do visual effects is that if the foreground is blurred out and you put an asset here, blur it out as well. So it matches the scene. Very cool. Dare to see it. A final reminder. Establishing agent connection. We have the awesome cinematic being uplifting and kind of like the whole soundtrack just like being epic. Yes. Good. We have all the characters kind of scroll through. And Tracer. Houston? Is that you, love? Is that you, love? It's been too long. Yes. <laughs> yes, it has. Sick. That was so cool, and of course the little tease at the end that the bad guy is not actually done. Overwatch. Pre-order now and get early access. That was pretty sweet. I really enjoyed it, guys. I'm very excited for the rest of the cinematics. Many of you guys want me to uh, kind of like react to and comment on Zero Hour, but from what you guys have told me, that is uh, the cinematic trailer or teaser for Overwatch 2, which is not out yet, so I think we should first wrap up all the Overwatch 1 cinematics and then jump to zero hour, because many of you guys have been like, Chris, do it, but I'm like, 
I'm sure it's good because you guys are always spot on, but we should wait a bit and wrap up Overwatch Cinematics number one. So as always guys, I hope you enjoyed another episode of Filmmaker Reacts. Let me know what your favorite part was as well as other recommendations you have. I go through all the comments as always. And uh, yeah, make sure to check out Filmora9 guys and a big thank you for them for sponsoring yet another episode as well as follow me on Instagram and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, stay awesome and creative. Thank <laughs> you.